Hey, Dan. Hi, Vogue. Welcome. Let's do this. Let's do this. You know why I'm here. I'm going to be asked some questions today, I think. 73 of them. That's true. How excited are you? On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm at a solid 14. That's not high enough. That's, That's not high enough. That's pretty high. Come on. All right, let's begin this interview. So what's the first thing you thought of this morning? Uh, what I was going to eat for breakfast. What's the first thing on your to-do list? Ordering what I was going to eat for breakfast. What's the fourth thing on your to-do list? Figuring out where I was going to go for lunch. What's something that you feel like should be on your to-do list, but it's not? Um, scheduling a workout for after the breakfast and lunch. And what's your go-to breakfast? Uh, blueberry ricotta pancakes from Little Dums around the corner. Delicious. Mm-hmm. All right. Come on in. Who's your favorite artist? Uh, Chris Knight is a favorite. I have a lot of his work. He's also Canadian. Nice. And favorite cocktail? Oh, no. Cosmopolitan on the rocks? Can I say that in it's, 2019? Yeah, you can. It's, it's okay. unique. That's a unique answer. And uh, what's your favorite scent? Anything like woody, like a burnt wood, like a cedar or a pine, something oody. Okay, who mm -hmm. is this friendly little furry guy? <laughs> this is Redmond. Hey, Redmond. This is my dog and best friend. How would Redmond describe himself if he could? Better than all of us. How do you think he'd describe you? I don't want to know. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about your dog? He is very calm and level-headed, qualities that I strive for every day of my life. Okay, Dan, I'm a huge, huge fan of Schitt's Creek. I love that show. Thank you. And I'm just putting it out there. Did you have <laughs> any idea when it started that you'd be here, five seasons deep, Emmy-nominated, next to the likes of all these shows right now? Absolutely not. The past six years have been an absolute dream come true. Congratulations. Thank you. And you acted, produced, wrote, and show ran mm. Schitt's Creek. Mm -hmm. How are you still standing? Uh, you might want to ask my therapist. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think when you do something that you're passionate about, that you love, it just comes quite easily. Which of those roles did you truly relish the most? I loved doing them all at the same time. There was something quite amazing about having an idea that only existed in my head, and by the end of it, seeing it come to life. It was fantastic. What will you miss the most about it? The people. Now, your character David once famously said when it comes to fashion. Uh-oh. Durable and elegant usually don't go hand in hand. Is this really true? I love durability in my clothing, and I think this sweater is both durable and elegant, so I'm gonna say I disagree with David Rose. <laughs> now, as someone who is never not well-dressed, what you? style advice can you offer? I think you have to feel comfortable in the clothes that you're wearing, because if you are uncomfortable, people can see, and people can tell, and that's not a good, that's not a good look. Is there any trend you are uncomfortable trying? Uh, hats, but I've tried all those trends and they did not work out, unfortunately. What was the last thing that you purchased? A house. Congrats again. Thank you very much. Adulting so hard. Mm -hmm. I know, I'm terrified and excited. What's the most luxe thing that you've ever worn? Probably the Rick Owens leather jacket that I wear in the pilot episode of our show. It was actually mine from my own closet. I bought it with my first paycheck. Um, I went to the store in New York. I swiped my credit card. My hand was shaking. Uh, and I've worn it every day since. Yeah. And I'm so glad that it made it into the show. You got to get your money's worth at the end of the day. What is something you can never overinvest in? Your relationships with your friends and family and loved ones. Wise words. Mm. What is your most prized possession? My relationships. And... Um, I mean, this is going to seem sort of boastful, okay? but why not? I'm ready for it. My MTV Movie Award. That's an, I was going to say, that is an MTV Movie Award. It is indeed. I saw the popcorn. Uh, and I'll tell you why it means so much to me. I started my career at MTV as a television host, so to win this for my role on Schitt's Creek was like a full circle moment. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Look at that. It's also very heavy, so I, I use it to work out. Yeah, it's a good way to do exercise. I don't. What is your favorite movie of all time? Bridget Jones's Diary. What is your favorite song of all time? If pressed, I would say I Will Always Love You by Dolly Parton slash Whitney Houston. I will take either version. It's a good combo. Mm -hmm. Now I heard a rumor that you're a huge Beyonce fan. Can you rank every Beyonce album? First of all, absolutely not. That's why would I ever do that? They're all masterpieces. All right. And second of all, is someone not a Beyonce fan? Doesn't exist. Okay. 
Doesn't exist. Just checking. Now, if it's not Beyonce, though, can you rank every Mariah Carey album? Absolutely not. Why would you ask me that? They're all masterpieces. Okay, I get it, I get mm -hmm. it. Now, if you were seated at a dinner table with Beyonce and Mariah Carey, how would you kick off the conversation? Well, first of all, I would have passed out when I got the invitation to that dinner. Yeah. So I would be unconscious for the dinner. People would have to like marionette my body into making it look <laughs> like I was enjoying myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. at the door. <laughs> She's like um, a Lily Nine. I will say this. Mariah Carey once uh, tweeted about our show and I had a full no. panic attack. That's I, a pretty big deal. It is a big deal. I got it on the airplane and I cried. Thanks. Wow. I don't know why I just told you that I cried. That's okay. I guess we're getting pretty intimate. What'd you get? Uh, these are blueberry ricotta pancakes from Little Don. Ah, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about your creative process. Oh, that sounds intellectual. It is. Let's the time to get intellectual. Uh -huh. when, when is the best time for your writing? I feel like every CEO says in the mornings, but for me, it's very, very late at night. And where do you get your inspiration writing? In my little writer's nook that I'll show you right now. Oh, that sounds like nice. Mm -hmm. What's the most important thing for you when writing? Oh boy, um, probably to just make sure that anything I'm writing feels honest and grounded and, and real. Yeah. Do you remember the first thing you ever wrote? Yes. It was a short story about a young girl that got kidnapped and taken to Russia at the turn of the century. What inspired that? I don't know. I've never been to Russia and I know nothing about the turn of the century. So I remember my grandmother crying at the story though, yeah. but that could be because it was so bad. Ah. Uh, uh -huh. Now at what age did you feel confident in your voice as a writer? I would like you to re-ask me that question in a decade. Okay. Mm -hmm. How do you beat writer's block? On the best of days, I would walk around the block. On the worst of days, I would plan a trip somewhere. Whose writing do you read or hear and feel utterly blown away by? I would say Joan Didion or nowadays Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Oh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge. fellow 73 questioner. She is incredible. Dan, would you consider yourself to be a routine person? Uh, no, I am not a routine person. Ah, no routines. So you don't have a morning or evening skincare beauty routine? I would say in that case, I am a routine person. I have a regimented I knew it. skincare routine that I don't care to share with all of you. I knew it, I mm -hmm. knew it. So besides the MTV Movie Award, what is your exercise regimen? Ooh, uh, I take a lot of walks around the block like a 92 year old grandmother in Florida. I have bad knees. What three staples should everyone have in their closet without fail? I would say a, a great pair of dress shoes, a great pair of dress pants, and a crisp white t-shirt. Whose fashion advice do you worship? Paul Newman, and I wish I could ask him about it. What's something you learned from The Gap that still holds true? Ooh, how to perfectly fold a turtleneck sweater. If you could distill your personality into one item of clothing, what would it be and why? Um, I guess a sweater, sweater. Yep. For, yeah. for lack of a right. better idea. Uh, I don't know, they're versatile, they can be expensive and cheap, and they pretty much, I guess, look good on everybody. Does that even make sense? It does. Okay, I'll go with your word on it. Totally coherent. All right. You source costumes for your show, which was the hardest to find? Season two of Schitt's Creek, I wanted this uh, helmet lang mohawked hoodie that I had longed for for quite some time. It took me six months to find. I finally found it on eBay and uh, we purchased it. We wore it and I now have it in my closet. Who's your favorite designer right now? Dries Van Noten. Uh, who's the most fashionable character in any rom-com ever? Bridget Jones. Favorite fashion moment in any rom-com ever? <sighs> Probably this dress is an Aliyah when Cher Horowitz was held at gunpoint in Clueless. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Now, you were born in Canada. I was born in Canada, proudly. What does Toronto have over LA? Uh, I would say the seasons yeah. and nice people. What's the most Canadian thing about you? I say sorry a lot. Sorry? Is it sorry here? I don't know. I'm not sorry. Here. I'm, here. I'm not here. Sorry. Those. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Now, you said growing up that you were an introvert as a kid. Would uh -huh. you still say that you are an introvert? Yes, which is why um, a one-take 
73 questions situation is not necessarily in my comfort zone. Well, you're doing fine. Mm -hmm. And we have some family over here. Oh. Is this a photo of you and your dad? This is a photo of my family and a photo of me and my dad. My dad actually gave me this little framed photo on the last day of shooting our show. What does it say on that? Um, It says, Daniel, it was an honor being your partner, son. Dad, XO. (laughs) Oh, no. I don't want to cry for you, Vogue, but I just might. You're so lucky to have a father like him. He is a lovely, lovely, sweet, generous man. Now, when you were growing up, did you have any idea that he was famous? Uh, not until I was around 15 when American Pie came out, and then everyone started asking me if the movie was based on my life. And unfortunately, I have not made love to a pie. (laughs) You wrote his part on Schitt's Creek. I did. How similar is that persona with his real life one? I would say there's a lot of similarities. Uh, He does not like getting his hair wet. So obviously in the first season of our show, I wrote a scene where his hair gets wet. (laughs) It's what you do to your family. Uh Damn. Yeah. Now, everyone in the show is individually so funny. They are indeed. Who was often the first to crack up? I would say me. Uh, and then I built it into my character. I feel like David laughs a lot um, at people, and that's just my way of blurring the lines between my unprofessionalism and his eccentricities. <laughs> now, you once described Schitt's Creek as being a celebration of love, and rather than just a comedy, a drama with comedic elements. That is, you have done Boom. your research. Nailed wow. It. Uh-huh. Nailed it. Would you change that? Uh, no. I think that is the most accurate description I have heard so far. What's something you learned recently that really impressed you or blew your mind? Uh, how cashews are made. They're not made, they're actually grown on trees. Anyway, Google it. It's crazy. (laughs) Okay. What are you currently excited about in life right now? Figuring out what my next show is going to be. And also, I have a little... I've been working on something, and I guess Vogue is the place to show it to. Saving it for Vogue. Uh That's smart. I'm nervous. What's your favorite book? It's a long-form co- poem called Autobiography of Red. Right. What's your favorite pizza? Pepperoni double cheese. Do you have any regrets, Dan? I feel like regrets are a waste of time. What was the last thing that made you cry? Shooting the last episode of our entire series. What was the last thing that made you cry from laughing? Shooting the last episode of our entire series. And what was the last time that you were surprised? when we got our Emmy nominations. What do you want to be remembered for? I guess having done some good. Wow, take a look at that. Uh Uh-oh, I don't know. I don't know what these are. Those look cool. Don't look too closely, they're just samples. But it's a little project I've been working on. Well, I want a pair of those. Mm -hmm. Now, you've been lauded for how you present queer stories. Hmm. How does that make you feel? Uh, Very grateful to have been given the opportunity to do that. What's been the most surprising response from telling those stories? Probably the letters that we've received from people who have told us that the show has changed their relationships with their family and friends for the better and has made them more confident people. It's incredible. It's amazing. You are someone who has proclaimed they love Japan. Yes. So this is correct. Verified. That is a fact. Now, what do you love most about Japan as a country and culture? I feel like when you're there, you feel like you're trapped between the past, the present, and the future, and that's pretty magical. And what's something you always, without fail, have to buy when you're there? Glasses. Which is why I wanna... Oh, you're gonna, I'm gonna try them on. I'm just gonna see which one works best. Let's see how I look. For you. Yeah. We might have to do this fitting a little later, right, but I would go. go with a sunglass, I think, yeah. if I were to do anything. At, yeah, we'll try later. Yeah, we'll figure okay, it out. But if I had 24 hours to spend in Japan, what one store, bar, restaurant should I have to hit? Okay, store, I would pick up something from Capital yeah. with a K, it's very special. Bar, JBS, which is a little record bar, and uh, Bar Trench, which is sort of a, feels like um, Sweeney Todd England or something. And restaurant, there's a little dumpling place in Harajuku. If you just look up best dumplings in Harajuku, you will find that place, but it is extraordinary. And they have the most amazing cucumber salad I have ever eaten. I just brought you to a place to the last question, talking Mm -hmm. about food, because the last question I have for you, Dan, this has been great. Can I have some of those pancakes? Because I haven't eaten all day. Uh, First of all, we are not eating on camera for Vogue. Uh, And second of all, that is an order for one, sir. So, no, you cannot. Ooh. I'm very grateful you were here, though. Sorry. Fine, I'll take it. All right. (laughs) Thanks so much, Dan. Thank you. This has been really, really cool. Bye. Bye.